there. I'm not sure how many people will get on today. Jennifer, it is good afternoon. And uh, I see I am casting a shadow on our project. I have a big window behind me. So I do apologize for that. I uh, logged on just a few minutes early. Hello, Carolyn. I always like to know if there's anybody creating with me. Because if there is, then I will tempo how fast I go to the general audience. So if you are creating with me today, please let me know. Hi, Gay. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I'm not sure if you were uh, able to join in last night, but we did our October art journal. And I'm just going to pull it up here um, because I finished it. I did do a little bit of shading, and it was like a Halloween scene. So I like that one. Oh my gosh, look, I just realized I'm, I'm missing an O. I did this fast before, um, they're not even stuck down, before I got on live here. So I will have to redo this and put my O there for October. <laughs> I'll fix that one up. So that was fun. You're in the tub, Jennifer. Holy jumpins. That's okay. <clears throat> and Carolyn just watching today. Very good. It's 2 o'clock. And uh, I like being prompt in case people are planning their day around wanting to attend. So let's get at it. Today we're going to make a little folio using Steampunk Mente paper line and the embellishments. And um, there are kits available. I don't know if there's any left, but there are kits available. You will have ribbon because I forgot to attach my ribbon when I was making my album. That's why it's kind of, uh, I just have the twine, but you could use twine too. And uh, it's decorated really nice and it kind of just opens like this. So it's like an accordion. And uh, I made tags to fit in each pocket, which I will review with you all. Take each pocket out. Um, I did put some little cards in here too. So the idea for this folio is I make something for a lady every year to put gift cards in for her daughter-in-law for Christmas. And when I was trying to think of a design to make for her this year, because I do something pretty cool every year just for her, um, I was watching a lady on Instagram put an album together like this. I don't have her name. I do apologize. So this is not my design. But I just remembered how simple it was to do. So I made one that's a little bit smaller you can make this any size that you want like you could make this a traditional 12 by 12 if you wanted to and put layouts in it that would be cool for a wedding gift would it not i'm just sitting here thinking so you can make this any size that you want you just have to allow enough space to wrap around your chipboard hi michelle happy thanksgiving to you too so uh, just a little inspiration for you, and uh, I do like the embellishments for this little album. The embellishments that come with it are pretty cute. And I created this before I knew what Heather was going to be able to get in stock for the kits. So I apologize in advance if I show you anything that's not in the kit. I don't know if she was able to get more of these chipboardy pieces. I, I just don't know. Um, but we will see. And there are so many embellishments in the package, regardless of what you get, that you will be able to sort through it. And I know we all have little stashes of stuff, right? So I'm going to put this one aside, and we're going to get right into it. So you, while well, you can rewatch and take notes if you want. So we're going to start with 
eight pieces of cardstock that are cut eight and a half by four and three quarters. So eight and a half by four and three quarters. If you were going to make this uh, a different size, you would just have to figure out the template to make your pages, but it wouldn't be difficult. So you need white paper, which is going to come in your kit, and you're going to cut that down, as I just said. Your leftover pieces, you keep those, because I did use those as part of my inserts. Plus, it's always great to have white scraps of cardstock on hand. Um, so I cut my pieces, and I'm just going to leave them here. You're going to have a half of a paper pad. So I'm going to put that to the side. Those things I do know. Uh, I think this was just leftovers from my previous one. Now, I'm not sure if she was able to get the puffy stickers. But if so, you'll have puffy stickers. And then there was a package of ephemera. And then some chipboardy pieces. And I have my ephemera, my leftovers, uh, spread out on the table. So I know there's a combination of stuff in your kit. You also need a piece of black card stock and that measures, I'm just finding it here, uh, just give me a moment, four by two and a half. Just as easy to measure it there. And then you are going to have some chipboard. And you need two pieces that are four and a half by four and a half. And that's our cover and our back. You also need a circle punch for little notches. I'm using the one and a half. I did do a little bit of uh, inking on edges, so I use black soot. And my inking tool. You will need a double-sided tape um, using the score tape and also I always have my liquid glue on hand um, and that's some scissors, bone folder and I think that's it. So let's get making. So we already have our white pages cut or I do but there's some scoring and some trimming up we have to do. Oh, we need a pair of scissors. And this is what we want it to look like. Don't worry about the marks on it. I'm going to review that with you. That was me trying to keep myself in tempo when, uh, when I was building it. So, in essence, you're going to have this piece that folds over. We glue this edge down and then we glue this edge up to create a pocket. And we're going to do eight of those. So let's go through that. So on every piece of your paper, you're going to put it in your scoreboard with the four and three quarters piece on this side because we want to score a half an inch on all of the bottoms. And I'm, I'm designating this as my bottom. You can use the opposite side, whatever you want. And I find it easier to do them all at the same time versus skipping around and then that way I'm less likely to make an error. So one half inch from the bottom. And I'm not using like thick paper. This is probably an 80 pound paper. So if you have thicker paper, that's good, but you do not need thick paper. What's everybody doing for the weekend? I'm excited. I'm having company tomorrow. That's why I had to change my class to today. Um, I totally forgot that it was Thanksgiving weekend when I when I booked my class and my calendar. So I'm happy that I was able just to switch it to today. And of course it's always taped. So that's the great thing about these videos. So half an inch on the bottom for all of them. 
and then I'm going to turn it around and on the right side I'm going to do a half an inch so that means my paper is eight and a half so at eight I'm going to do a half an inch and I'm going to do that to all of them cooking turkey dinner with sausage stuff oh sausage stuffing I've kind of heard of it but I've never done it sounds very delightful. Stuffing and gravy is kind of my downfall. I love it. And I do the traditional bread stuffing with a little bit of potato in it sometimes. Kind of what we grew up with. I don't put any nuts or cranberries or anything like that in it. So now that we have English tradition from my mom and grandma, oh, that's nice. Yeah, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's always about the traditions. So we have our half an inch on the bottom, our half an inch on the right side, and then starting from left to right, you're going to score it at the four. So we're going to do all our scoring. You'll, you're going to see how quick this album comes together. It's so simple that it is a real treat. And you can whip one of these suckers up mighty quickly. In my description, I put like things that you can use this for gift card holder. You can use it for pictures, for sure. You can use it... Um, for recipes so you could have a little folio with your special recipes for a holiday into it that's a neat idea and you're going to see how fast it comes together that it's just a breeze so I'm going to put my scoreboard away for a minute and if we look at our template this is the only tricky piece if I if I was to say there is a tricky piece is we are going to cut starting from the left, moving to the right, this portion of each one out. So I'm finding my pencil. And we just cut this on an angle, and we're going to cut out this whole bottom part that we scored. And you, you chop it on an angle just so that when we fold it and we bend it up, it's just a little bit more tidy. I'm going to take my big scissors for this. Big chompers. And then I am going to trim. So if you see here, I just trim this little nib off and angle it. So that's what you're left with. Very easy peasy. Um, if you want to create one just from copy paper and have it as your template to sit in front of you, that's what I did. And I found that very helpful. So I'm going to cut off my little nib here first. And then cut this one off. You can use your paper trimmer if you want. I like these long scissors for this reason. Whenever I'm doing this type of project too big though to cut the small nibby parts. But they're perfect to cut the long pieces. And I tend to be straighter with the long scissors than when I try to do multiple little cuts. something that you guys think that you would want to create it's very easy it's probably one of the easiest mini albums I've ever created and it can be used for so much and I kind of like the idea of using it as a uh, memorabilia for recipes and 
things like that as a gift because I'm going to have two made with the steampunk. I have a co-worker that has two daughters and uh, they're the same age. So not twins though. One, one was adopted and um, one is theirs and it's so cool that they're the same age. So I think I'm going to give these to, to her to give to her girls. I'm sure they'll find some fun things to do with them. But I will be making a Christmas one for my friend for gift takes. We've got two left to go. And as you can see, it, it goes... Uh, yeah, it is a great little project. Like I said, I can't take credit for the design, and uh, I'm sorry that I don't have a reference to give you for that, but because I, I do that all the time. I watch these uh, Instagram things, and then I can never find them again, and then I'm trying to remember. That's why I had the copy paper um, sample, because I knew it was going to take me a few tries to figure it out, just from what I remembered. So all this is scrap, and we're already kind of halfway there. It's uh, That was the most difficult part of the album. So now we're just going to varnish our edges, and we'll make our little envelopes. I'm just going to flip these up, flip them over. I didn't want to make them in advance just in case someone was making with me that uh, I'd be able to gauge what they were doing and instead of just pausing and waiting. I should know by now though because most people do watch first. Even when we used to have our Ricky Paloozas, there was a, a fair amount of people that would create along with the teacher, but there was a lot of us that would kind of watch and do, do something else and then finish it on our own. There's a little bit of safety in, in re-watching. Because, you know, we never know if we're going to make a mistake while we're doing live. And we wouldn't want you to ruin your paper. So, it's not a bad idea to watch first. And you can do this any color paper. So, you, it doesn't have to be white. I just chose white. Because the paper itself is pretty colorful. I'm just looking at this little piece and I and I think I'm going to do a little angle right here too. It just helps when you're gluing it together uh, in case your cuts are a little bit funky that it tucks in better. burnishing done and like I said I'm just going to on the bottom I'm just going to cut this one off on an angle and same up here it's just it's just a good habit to get into when you're making little albums if you taper your edges then it's easier to fold and glue makes it look a little bit tidier that's all Sunny one minute, raining the next here in Nova Scotia. It's been this way all week. And quite chilly. 
especially in the evening, we actually started putting on little wood fires, which is so cozy. That's when I really like crafting. So today I'm just kind of, I did housework this morning and my husband went and got the groceries. It is my children's birthday on the 15th. I have twins and they'll be 30. One lives away, but he is moving back east. Uh, very excited to say uh, next month. He had a job opportunity, so he's going to come back east, which is great, and, and our daughter is here. So uh, I'll be baking a birthday cake after. So now we're going to glue our pieces down. You can certainly use your, your liquid glue for that, but I always get a little bit nervous because I tend to squeeze too much, and then, like, you know, your pocket might close up on you. So I like using score tape and I'm just going to put a string of it on both sides of my fold. Yeah, it is exciting. Happy to have him, happy to have him back. Our daughter was uh, out west too. She was in Vancouver since, well, for 10 years and she just moved back east last winter so it's really nice to have your your kiddos near we didn't have them both of them were away pretty much since school so which is now 11 years 10 years can't remember but happy to have them closer can't bake my son's cake, of course, but uh, I can do our daughter's. I always make sure he has something fantastic, though, on his birthday. Set him up with some gift cards, or I check in to see if his friends are doing anything. One year I did have dinner delivered to him from a nice restaurant. I think that was the year of COVID when nobody could get out. So we do our best. A little bit of repetition but that's what makes the project easy you guys got your Christmas shopping done yet dare I even say the word I don't have a big list anymore so it's and now with our son moving home I don't even have to panic about shipping because that was always uh, a big stressor was to make sure I, I had to have his parcel out by no later than the 1st of December the end of November in order for him to get it on time and then I had to be very selective into what I sent so this year will be nice he'll be home um, so any and it'll be just nice there's adults, but there's still something about having kids, your kids, opening gifts underneath the tree Christmas morning. And then I'm just looking for my little tool. I like using my craft pick or my craft knife to uh, save my fingernails and flip up the tops. A little garbage can. You know what? I just realized I did something. So I was supposed to do here and then over top. See that it is a good idea. My my tape should have went on the inside, not the outside. But it doesn't really matter. What I can do is I can do them at the same time and just make it all an inward pocket which is still fine, it's just a different way than what I did it before, so just be mindful of that. It's no different, it's the same pocket and we're only going to see this much of it, so don't worry about it. 
you have a package to send to Australia. How long does that take? Not done Christmas shopping. Well, you know what? I have I have people that are done Christmas shopping. Not me. But there's people six weeks. Well, you know what? That's not too much different than like even across Canada. It's um, Canada Post has free shipping on Tuesdays this month. And I don't know if it's for November too, but free shipping on Tuesdays. Anywhere in Canada, if that's helpful to anybody. I always missed it. I never got it out in time. So it can't be November, or if it is November, it ends pretty quickly. Um, it probably isn't November because they know Christmas season is their big money maker. They get enough money from me anyway with me sending out my Christmas cards. I generally send out uh, anywhere between 50 and 60. Okay, I'm just going to put these up here for now. So again, tape, just be mindful that if you're wanting to just do one kind of attachment at a time, make sure that you're putting your tape on the right ends. But this works out good too. I'm in the Christmas card making though. That starts, well, you guys know that I come color with me series. It's all about Christmas cards and uh, projects from here on end probably will be Christmas related for me just because the season is very short in, in the making part and it's fun being very specific on the theme. Last one. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make our notch. And that's always a little bit tricky because you want your notches to be as lined up as possible when you have a book like this. Mine definitely aren't perfect. But you want them to look, you don't want one down here or one up here, maybe you do. And if you do, that's fine too. If you make it different intentional, then it won't look like a mistake. But I, I kind of want mine to be the same. So what I do is I have the glass mat. I use this all the time for measuring. And there is, like right now, I'm just putting it in between two points. My two that's the center of the card because now the card is four inches wide. And then I just kind of eyeball and say half inch here, half inch here. And then for, I'll show you how I know how deep to do. So let's, let's do this part for all of them. So two inches, a half inch, and a half inch. It just kind of gives you a little guide. And then we can erase any pencil marks that we have. Half an inch on either side. The glass mat is a favorite tool of mine. I use it all the time, especially for measuring. Um, I really want a reason to get the new white one. Because the downside with the black one is if you use it for ink smooshing, like you know how you can squish your ink pads into the mat, spray it with water, and then swoop your paper through, you can't see what color of ink by just looking at the glass mat because it's black. And that was one of the reasons he came out with a white one, which was super smart, but I wish he had done it when I bought this one. And this one is still pretty good, so 
so um, I really don't have a reason to get a new one. Not that that has stopped me in the past. If I had someone that close by to get this one too, I probably would just bite the bullet and get the white one. But my best crafting buddy already has a glass mat. So she did not want mine. Um, tea rollers are fantastic to have in your little arsenal of tools. So I am just going to put my tea roller. And I want it so that, well, let's do it like this first. So there's my two inch. So I'm in between some measurements. The two inch is my middle. I just want to come down a half an inch. So I'm going to put a mark there for a half an inch. And then you take your T ruler and you slide it up to the half an inch. And I'm just going to put a light line. And we can erase. Um, after the fact but we're going to be covering it up with paper anyway so between my lines there's the half inch and then so that way when I put my I have some some kind of anchor spots that I know approximately where to put my notches in I love fall. I don't know about you guys. The only thing I hate about fall, I love spring. I love summer. I love fall. Oh, I went down. I went down three quarters of an inch with my first one, but that's all right. It's just to give me a marker. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm going to go half for the rest of them because that's kind of was the majority. Um, I hate winter. I hate winter. How do you guys feel about winter? I like winter for crafting. I like winter for, like, you know, cozy homes. I hate winter for outside cold, traveling to work, getting around. You love winter? What do you do, Carolyn? Do you, like, do you have an outside activity that you love, or you just love the cold temperatures? I'm like, there's nothing wrong with you, girl. Not a fan of winter, love summer. Yeah, me too. But I get enough of it. Like, you know, I, I would not want to live in a climate where it was one season all year round. Like, I'm not... A snowbirder. I'm not someone that needs that sun for the entire year. Um, I, I could handle all fall all year long, all spring all year long, but the heat of the summer, I love it, but I'm glad when it wraps up, but I hate winter. You like fall too, Shelly? Oh, it is pouring rain out there. I've already got most of the colors in Northern Alberta and Nova Scotia were uh, pretty much all changed as well. We went from really warm temperatures to really cold temperatures mighty quick. So there's my half an inch. There are my markers. So I know I'm not going to go beyond the line. I'm going to stay above the line. And about equal mounts on either side of my markers and I'm going to call that as good as it gets now you can take your first one and template the others and see how that works out for you but um, I like this little little trick you Carolyn you have always loved the snow but you still like the cold and snow like we never grew up with uh, the snow toys in my house, like the snowmobiles, um, skiing, my parents, like, you know, we were from a, a village that travel wasn't something that we did. Everybody was working paycheck to paycheck. So I never got exposed to skiing or 
snowshoeing or any of that activity. So um, it's not something that I look forward to. And I have no desire to do it now that I'm older because I don't like the cold. Skating, we did plenty of skating as children. We used to actually, back in the day, we would get much colder temperatures than what we do now. And the ocean, the inlet, right across my parents' house would freeze. And, uh, okay, this is the one that I kind of went a little bit. I want to measure that one again so I don't go off the grid. Um, but our winters aren't that cold anymore. So it doesn't freeze. But yeah, we used to have a community ice rink and um, did lots of skating. But skates always hurt my feet. I did it as a kid because, you know, we loved it. But no desire to do it as an adult. But good on you folks that that I enjoy winter. One year, my best friend and I, because she doesn't like winter neither, we said, you know, she's from New Brunswick, I'm from Nova Scotia. I said, Let, let's embrace the winter. Um, neither one of us had the funds to do like a south trip. So I said, let's, let's just do something close. So in February, we actually took a trip to old Quebec City, and it was in winter, and we had such a fun time. We stayed where we could walk up into the villages and the markets and the, and the stores, and they have a zoo there. So we did some fun things. I drove to her house, which is about five and a half hours away. And then we drove together to Quebec, which was probably another six hours away. So that was fun. So I'm just erasing my lines. Okay. So they line up pretty good using that method. So use whatever method you, you have for getting your notches as balanced and equal as you can. That was just um, a little trick of mine. Yes, uh, Shelley, it was fun. And if, if you haven't been to old Quebec, and if it's not like, if it's doable for you for like driving or whatever, it is stunning. And if you're a skier, or snowboarder, then of course they have all kinds of nice resorts and things available to you. So the next thing we're going to do is maybe, I'm just looking at my notes, uh, assemble pages. We are going to look through our pattern paper and I'm going to decide which ones I want for my covers. This is the one that I used before, and I think I'm going to stick to that. So what I like about their paper is it's only single-sided. And I like that because I'm always hating to cut paper up because it's always so gorgeous on both sides. But I like the single sides. Great, Shelly. I'm glad that you like that as a tip for notches. So I'm going to keep this one. So if you look at my little album, because I piled on so much other color, then I used this one for the front and the back was just this plain one. So I'm going to put those two pieces aside because I don't want to cut them up. And then we are going to cut 14 three by four pieces from this paper. So you can cut as whatever you want. Where that goes, we don't, yeah, I did. So where it goes is kind of on the front of the envelopes. 
and you don't have to decorate this because you can't like open the pages all the way and flatten them they just open that much but I just found it looked too plain without something there you could use um, like a cardstock to match but we have the paper so why not use the paper so that's where all these pieces are going it's kind of on our pockets so let's get to trimming Oh, maybe I'll take my small one. So I'm just going to look through my paper. And because we're doing 3 by 4 you can actually get two out of one sheet. So, no we can't. Yes you can. Three. Three first. And then I want to keep that smile. So... Don't do what Cherry did. If you want to keep the smile, then you have to turn, flip your page and cut it the other way. So my smile is going to be like that. But I'm okay with that too because you'll be able to see it from this angle. Like that. So the smile will be there. And really, if it was on the bottom, you're not going to be able to see it. So maybe that was a happy accident. We're going to go with that. So three by four. Keep all your little scrappy pieces. So we got one. Two. There, there's some very fun paper in this kit and it's thick. Like I definitely want this picture. So I'm going to do the three this way. And sometimes, so it's going to be like that. Yeah, I like that. Like sometimes you might want to take a little bit on one end and then flip it over so you have whatever image that you want. These, these little scraps just kind of are used to decorate whatever you're going to insert into the pockets and I'll show you what I inserted. So feel free to cut up your paper however you wish. I'm just going to trim the little pieces that to make sure I get I save the big images. So we got four and this one it doesn't matter which direction. This is the graffiti. I did look through, um, oh, I love this one, love, love, so I want to make sure I have the light bulbs. and I see All in Create has some stamps with light bulbs. And I don't know what it is with light bulbs. Um, I'm attracted to them, and I don't have a lot of stamps with light bulbs. Oh, wrong, wrong pile. I lost count. I'll recount here in a minute. Two... Four, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So two more sheets. Which ones do I want? Maybe this one and the pink one. And you're still going to have some full sheets left over. So I hope you can see that it's a very easy project and I can't wait to create one for, I think I might do um, 
for the staff at the office, I might do one with recipes. Do a recipe share. Hmm. This is very easy. But this paper is very interesting. So I'm going to put my extra paper aside with my little bits. I'm just going to put them over the side of my table. You love light bulbs, Carolyn? Yes, she does have a mold. And I think she sent me some. Now that you say that, I think I asked her to send me some. But I, that was one of the things that attracted me to this paper is like within the embellishment pack, they have all kinds of these gear light bulbs. I like it. So I am just going to quickly ink my edges. Yeah, light bulbs are fun. I don't know what it is. It's that gear, like um, there's a paper line, Christmas line in the store from Stamperia. It's like Christmas gears. Oh my God, I freaking love that paper. Of course, I purchased it when I was there and uh, didn't have no room in my suitcase. So I asked Dan to please ship it. I'm just waiting for my box. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on that. It was just very fun. It came out the same time as the Nutcracker. Now, I'm not a Nutcracker person. I have a couple of them that are old that I put out for Christmas. But um, I'm not a collector of Nutcrackers. They don't really do anything for me in particular. I know some people just love them. And it very much symbolizes Christmas for them. Yeah, the gear, the gears with Christmas, something like that, and their embellishments were gorgeous. So yeah, got those coming. And I told myself I wasn't buying any more Christmas paper. Haha. Uh -huh. I actually am falling behind in my scrapbooking projects. So I think after Christmas, um, I'll want to kind of put cards aside for a little bit. And I will have a look. To see what pictures I need to scrapbook and maybe we'll do some scrapbooking some single page layouts in the next month or so after Christmas I think that might be a great idea if there's classes you guys are looking for please let us know because sometimes we scratch our head and wonder what it is that people want to see. We know that there's loads of content out there on the internet. But our community is special here. It's like we got our own little club at Unique and it's very fun. There. Easy peasy. So now I'm going to adhere these to the pages front and back. Now you don't have to put anything on the very front page and you don't have to put anything on the very back page because those two pages actually stick right down to your chipboard. So that's why we only cut 14 and not 16. So I'm going to use my little blue press. And I'm going to be mindful as to where I put my words. I love this glue. And this is the is it pro, um, that, I like the glue that, I forget the name of it, the one that you can't ship in the winter. 
The Nouveau glue is good too, but I do like that glue. So this is the front, this is the back. So this is from, and maybe I'll do one more, I'll do the back cover so I don't forget because I get chatting and then I forget. So I'll make this the back cover. facing up again and I'm just keeping it a little bit off the bottom so that would be my front and back so I don't have to do both sides now everything else I'll do both sides Very pretty paper. Now, uh, what I done is, this was the same, art glitter glue. Thank you, Carolyn. This was the same as this, this page here. So I'm just gonna put that one aside and then use a different paper. So that we just have some variation. You can put both sides of the same packet from the same paper sheet. It's whatever you prefer. I think mine is getting a little bit low on glue. What I find is that um, you use so much less glue because of the fine edge that you get. At least that's what's happening for me. Like before, I would use way too much glue and it's wasteful. But now because it squeezes it out and spreads it so fine, I don't use half as much glue. But yeah, I have a nice big bottle to do me for the winter. Now the only benefit to the Nouveau glue is that you, it can be shipped regardless if it's winter or not. So that's certainly uh, a bonus. So if I run, if for some reason I run out of glue during the winter, I know that I can get some of the Nouveau glue, but I can't imagine I'll run out. I keep saying I'm going to give you a tour of my room, but it's just in constant disarray because I have so many projects on the go. I would say after Christmas, when all my Christmas stuff gets put away, because that's kind of what's surrounding me right now, I will do a little tour. And you will see the obsession I have with adhesive. I have a drawer that's just dedicated to adhesive. And Sherry has a slight panic attack when it ever so light, slightly starts to get diminished. I don't know what I think it's going. There's going to be a world shortage of pot pop dots and score tape, but uh, yeah. So I'm just going to pile them back up this way and then start over. But that's one thing that I don't want to run out of, is adhesive. Anybody else have that? Like where you're... I mean, my, I, we have a scrapbooking store in Nova Scotia, but she's two and a half hours from me. And I only go there twice a year with my friend. And she has an online store too, and great customer service and all of that. But um, I always, I, I just got myself attached to Unique a long time ago. And uh, I love how lighthearted and fun that Heather and Dan is. They don't take themselves too serious. Um, and and their customer service is beyond anything I've ever experienced. Like they will try to do their best. Wait until you see what's coming for the auction. She showed me when I was there and I'm like, Heather, you're crazy. 
like, you need to put this stuff out on your shelves. And she just laughs at me. And she's like, no, we want to give the deals to our customers. And I'm like, okay. I'll be home bidding away. Thanks, Yvonne. Nice to see you here today. Happy uh, Thanksgiving. We're just putting our little mini album together, and it is very nice paper. I think she only brought, she didn't bring in the, the uh, paper as sellable, other than for the kits, I do believe. I could be wrong, but I think the only place I've seen it was in the kits. You buy score tape, Carolyn. I know. Isn't it awful? Yeah, I have a big obsession and fear of running out of tape. Crazy. Crazy talk. Okay, so that is that part. And now let me see. I did that. We're going to put our pages together. So you're going to find your your back page. So this is, I know it's going to be the back page or the, or the front page, whatever I want. And there's the opposite. So this one here is going to go be my first page. So when I put it in, my album will go like this. And then we have this page. We have this page. We have this page. This one. This one, this one, and then our last one will be this one. So when you put it together, this the very top page should be blank, and the back page should be blank because that's going to adhere right to our chipboard. So what we want to do now and you could have, because we're going to be putting score tape on the very bottom part of each page, you could have moved your pattern paper up a little bit more if you wanted to, to kind of see it more within the album. Totally up to you. I have a hard time being straight with my paper. I know I can be straight on the bottom, but not always up here. But if you want to move your paper up, so that you see more of the paper because you're not going to see the bottom one half strip anyway, one half inch, because we are going to use our double sided tape to make sure that we have them thoroughly intact. So I'm keeping right to the bottom. I don't know what you guys use to, to rip off your tape, but I have this tool. It's an old ranger. It's like a pan scraper, really. And I just laid on the edge of my tape to come clean. Now, I don't need to put any on this side because it's going to stick to this side, but I do need to put some on this side. So I'm just going to move the one off to the side. None on this side, but some on this side. So it's kind of the what I call the, the backhand side of each of them. And because this is going to take some really, I don't want to say abuse, but every time you open up your accordion album, it's put in strain. I'm actually going to go along with a bead of glue as well to stick them down. Uh, 
and then one more. Now this one here is actually, I'm going to do the whole back with score tape. And I'll do the same on the front one. And I do not skimp on my tape because I do not want this album to come apart. So I put lots on it. And then my top one, same thing. Look at that, we're an hour into it already. Thanks for hanging out with me. There. So I'm going to put my score tape aside for a minute. I have my package, so this is the front, that's the back, but we're not going to be adhering it to our chipboard pieces yet because we're not we're not ready for it. But we are going to adhere this piece and that's this piece. So I'm going to show you a trick that I've learned from somebody. So I'm looking for my um, Misty. Because I cannot line up things to save my life. And it's quite important that you line these up as close as what you can. I'm going to take this pad out because what I want is I just want the the misty. So I'm going to tuck this in the corner. Bring this up a little bit so you can see. I'm actually going to tuck this one in the corner because it's this one that we need to stick down. And by doing that, if I tuck it in the corner, then I know before I stick it down completely, I'm going to tuck this one in the corner too. And it just helps me line up those bottoms. Now it gets a little challenging when, as you're stacking them, but I found that this is better than what my eye can do. And I'm going to put a little bead of, t of glue too, because I just want this super, super strong. I'll tuck that in the corner and I know it's lined up. See? Lined up. Maybe you guys have a trick. Maybe you're good at eyeballing it. My eyeballs aren't very great. down hard as we put them together so it's the part that's got no tape going on this part and pretty soon the misty won't really help out that much because it's getting to be thicker than my misty but it helped me out or half of it and I'll still I'll still keep it here because it is still a good good guide for me oh good Carolyn I always like it when when I'm able to give you some little tips and tricks that you haven't heard of before Yeah, so I'm probably going to take it out at this point, or I was going to say we could have made a separate pile and then put them together, but maybe I'll just keep it going, because it is above my misty. That's the other good thing when you have a little bead of glue, it's a little bit forgiving for placement. You can wiggle it a little bit, but I do have my undo handy. My undo is probably the saving grace of album creation for me.
Oh, I'm a little bit off there, but I'm okay. One to go. It is pouring rain, and I know my husband is outside doing a project that he and I had started in the garden, and he wanted to get it finished today. <laughs> he is probably getting very wet. I was out to looking at it before I started class. There. Okay. And I'm going to take my little iron. This is really cast iron iron. <laughs> it is a terrible. I found it at um at the at the um antique store here in in, in town. And I wish she had more because it is the perfect weight to put down. It, it's pretty heavy to put down to kind of hold things. And I even use it to burnish um, things on there. And it's just cute. So I'm going to put my misty away. And I'm going to put hot chocolate time. Ooh, that sounds good. I still have coffee on the go. It's no longer hot. It's cold, but I still like it. So now we are going to cover our chipboard pieces. And this is very easy because this is exactly the size, six by six, that you need to cover for a four by four. Four and a half. Four by four, four and a half, four and a half by four and a half piece of chipboard. Um, it just gives us the perfect length all the way around. So off with our score tape again. Where did I put it? Where did I put my big roll? No wonder I can't see. I don't have my computer glasses on. Right here. And my little tooly tool. And I don't skimp on score tape here, neither. I think I have some wider stuff in my drawer. Um, the most, the, what I use the most is the quarter and the eighth. But I keep some wider stuff on hand for projects like this. I want to make sure I get the edges for sure. And then we'll do this one. But this is, like it's a lot of repetition for this album, so it's, you can have a movie on. Once you do one, you can put a movie on, you can watch it, and it's kind of just there. And, uh, I always keep like a little book of instructions for myself so that it's easy for me if I haven't done a particular project in a while. Like I had this made now for quite a long time, but it was very easy for me to pick it up and review my instructions and know, know where to go. So this one, I just want to see if there's any direction. There's a little bit of, of uh, print. So off comes the score tape. You're not a coffee drinker, Carolyn? I love coffee. Now, if I have a coffee, a new one now, I'd have an issue with sleeping tonight. But um, I actually had a large one from a and this morning. That's what I'm still sipping on. So that will, that will do me for coffee intake today. If I'm just doing a curry machine, I generally have two. I am going to add some glue again just as a little extra something something and 
it's so very forgiving where we have to put this because we have we have paper we can jiggle with. I'm just going to square it on my mat and guesstimate using the lines to where that has to go. And then we're going to do some good burnishing. Your more tea, but anything hot. My sister actually warms water and adds lemon to it and drinks that. glue down here. Even simple mini albums takes time though, hey? I try to keep our videos like no longer than an hour and a half because yeah, I you know, I know you folks have a life outside of paper crafting. So I try to be mindful of that. And we we want them as effective as possible too so that you're encouraged to do them. Just kind of burnishing the paper down. And then I'm going to take a tool. I purchased these from Unique way back when they had them. Um, they're just like the corners. And I find they are great. And I know there are tools out there to make sure that you leave enough of your corner to um, fold so that your corners don't show. But I like this these little tools. They're all kinds of different sizes. This is the 1 8 And I just put it there, put a little notch. Now I know even that's a little bit too far away. I don't need all of that, but I'd rather take some off than take too much off and then have one of my corners exposed. And there's always tricks to covering your corners if you do that. Like washi tape is the fix for almost anything. But I like this tool. It uh, helps you line things up. I'm a tool girl. If you want to get me just say it's oh look at this new tool and I'm all over it so I'm going to put it back in my baggie yeah they unique had these made quite some time ago and the uh, sizes are edged edged into them and there's a whole bunch of different sizes and there's one there with this unique scrapbooking store then you're going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut it's kind of like a curve and cut along that area and again you don't want to curve it too much or cut too deeply because then your edges will show your edges like as in your chipboard will be exposed So if you're not sure, just do a little bit, and you can always trim more off. You just can't add it. And the reason why I kind of curve up is because if you cut too much off here, too, your chipboard will be exposed. It's kind of like a... You have to make a few mini albums and cover cover chipboard to kind of get the hang of it. And I still make mistakes. It's certainly not perfect. So then I just kind of go around and fold my edges like this before I add any tape. Just to start to get them pliable.
And now we're going to add some more score tape. And I put a nice piece down at the bottom. Right around both all four sides. So when you cut it off, if you have something like this to kind of cut it off, when you have, now you have the angle for your other side already done. So that's helpful. And then we're going to do this one. So that's why I'm kind of flipping my book around to find the right angle to match, to match my score tape. And I get it as close to the edge as I possibly can on the paper side. And you're going to see I put a lot of tape again because you don't want to go and create these books and then have them fall apart. So then I'm going to take a narrower tape, so like my quarter inch. And you see like this little spot here. I want to make sure that that has adhesive too. So I don't tuck it in there. What you do is you put it on top of here on your chipboard. So when you fold your paper up, it's going to catch that little bit of space that doesn't have adhesive. going on in your guys' lives. Anything you want to share? I like the chatter. I find that we're not in need of making mini albums from scratch anymore not as much as what we used to because so many companies are coming out with ideas like those uh i think it's the 49 and market folios like come already built for you and you just have to decorate them which is fabulous now i'm even going to put a little bead of glue right butt it right up against the chipboard Maximum adhesion. When we put these together, you could add a bead of glue along the edge. Yep, that's just what I'm doing. Right on the edge. Or you mean up here instead of the score tape? You certainly can. I'm just showing you the way I do it, but yes, absolutely. Whatever adhesive you have that you know that works well for you, then go ahead and use it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all the glue off, or the, the pieces off, because this is a tiny project. Um, I will do it like this. If this was like a larger folio, I might just do one side at a time. Now we already kind of tucked in and, and varnished, so um, I come with my bone folder and I go right along the edge with some pressure. And then starting from the middle, just folding out. 
and then you see that's your little corner and you want to try to get your bone folder in there to kind of tuck in the, any extra paper that you have and we'll do this on both sides and I'm going to do the other side here first so I do the two opposite sides and then work on tucking any paper in and you're just kind of bending it with your bone folder and then you come along and varnish it on oh shoot I have um, arthritis or something going on in my hands and every now and again I'll get like almost like a little electric shock in my fingers it does not feel that great and I drop stuff boy growing old is nice isn't it the things you have to look forward to and then you just give it a good varnish so that's one and it looks very neat and tidy now let's do the other so bead of glue right up along the edge So the cake I'm going to make my daughter, she said she wanted a chocolate mousse kind of cake. So off to Pinterest I went looking for a chocolate mousse cake and I found one. It has like a, almost like a cake batter bottom and then you do like a ganache and whip it with whipped cream for the mousse filling and then you put more ganache on the top it sounds like it's absolutely calorie free <laughs> it will be good I hope I've never made one so we'll, we'll see how it goes so tackle one side first and then just start from the middle and push it down and then take your tool and give it a good varnish same from the other side and then manipulating the corner paper this paper is thick too so it it's like you know you have to kind of work it If you had one of those paper shapers handy, that would be good to have too for your corners. Sounds delicious. I know it does, doesn't it? I can't wait to to have it. The worst thing is you have to leave leave, leave it set overnight, of course, and. Uh, I'll be digging into my craft supplies to for the foam part for the because it says use a piece of acetate inside your your pan so you can build build up something to hold the mousse while it sets. So yeah, I'll be in my stash looking for stuff. So there's the cover. Pretty good. So now we're going to take our pieces. Now I want to make sure my light bulb is up like this. You could have it down like that, but I want this as the cover of my book and I want it on the right hand side. So that's my cover. I'm going to flip it around and I know that this has to stick down like so. And this one, I'm just going to use my grid lines again on my project and I'm going to aim for the best. Before we do that, this is your spine, the little black piece of paper that we cut out. It's two and a half by four. We have to stick that down first so that 
it comes around the base like this and we don't score it we just kind of shape it and you're the only part you're going to see is this part if you wanted to score it probably let me see I just want it to be kind of organic and shape the spine but I would probably score it at the half and then maybe one notch further than the three-quarter and put this much over on your each side of your spine so let's do that part first um, so I'm just going to take off the bottom part of the score tape, put a little bit of glue, and you're not going to be able to see this this good on that, it, are you? So I'll leave it on my cover so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just looking at the first score line as an approximate. Tack it down and then we will varnish it. And then we're going to take off this part. A little bit of glue. So then you have this little cute little spine. Now we have to add more adhesive here because this now has to stick down to our covers. So I'm going to go on the upper line just to make sure. Of both sides. So now we're going to take off all score tape. just off on one side and I'm going to take some glue and just beat it kind of in between the score tape just for some extra and you can stick your finger in the pocket as so and you just have to eyeball it I'm just going to look at my other one yeah you don't go to the very end you could but I did leave a little bit like an eighth of a space maybe and then stick it down it's mo more important to have this part level with your top and maybe that's where you need to measure from and to burnish this you just take your bone folder and you go in the pocket and as best as you can kind of burnish that down and then you can kind of give it a little once over this way too so that's my top and then this is my bottom so we're going to do the same thing again and because we covered our edges with the paper then it's all covered um, there's enough of the edge so that you don't have to cover this inner piece that gets covered up with your spine. And before I do this piece, I should have added, in your kits you are going to get ribbon. If you choose to add ribbon so that the ribbon comes up and ties from the top, you would have put your ribbon on before you put your covers on. So you still would have put your black spine on first 
then you would adhere your ribbon and the extra ribbon is going to come up here you would adhere your ribbon and then put your spine on but I like the twine so I'm going to stick with the twine now for the back cover I think I'm going to get well I can even take my score pal I was going to say I'm going to get my misty but score pal will do because I want to make sure that I'm square so I'm just tucking it into the square of my score pal sorry if you can't see that I can't push it up any further I don't think maybe I can do it from this side to show you what I'm doing I'll have to stand up though and my back is just plain there's no design on it so I don't have to worry about it and I'm going to try my best to square it up not bad not bad not too shabby so I am going to just burnish on the inside And then again over here. And we put loads of tape. So there really is your album. It is done. Um, I'll show you how I decorated the front. Now I can see that I have like one little piece of paper overhanging. That does not bother me. But if you're someone that that bothers, you could always take your craft knife. And I would just make a mess trying to fix that little bit of paper than what it's worth so that is the album what do you think it is really a very easy album to make so now let me show you how I decorated it and what I used in case you want to follow suit so for my top again I'm not sure what's coming in the kit uh, but you're going to have lots of stuff to decorate I pulled out one of the words in the kit or in the embellishment pack and it said fearless and un unapologetic and I first put down one of the ball the light bulbs on the base and then I took some other ones and I popped them up you don't really see them but I wanted things really dimensional so I popped them up before I put my title on so like it's kind of layered under there and then I used one of the puffy stickers for wow um, I put down one of the gears there's a little banner in there that I used and actually the circle that come out of the gear shape I put that there and then popped up another little little gear element there is a B under here and then some wooden embellishments and from your scraps you're going to do whatever you want to do so all of mine either have every other one has a card that opens so I use my scraps and made these cards now if you want these cards and I think it comes right from our scraps then it is eight and a half by three and a half so I think it is actually left over from our paper the paper actually that I trim from but that's and then you just score it in the middle and I popped up some of the different embellishments use scraps of paper um, you know I'm a big fan of using all the scraps so I really did and then the other pockets have a little tag like this and it has some leftover paper I used all my words and just leftover papers and this was this is the we are memory keeper punch tab it's this one we are memory keepers and it has three different sizes of slots that you can put your paper in to create these fun tabs.
and that is the album and on the back I always put my signature so I have a like a little punch for a uh, flag and I have a stamp that says my name and attic inspired crafter with an embellishment I hope you enjoyed today and you can see it's extremely easy it's just a lot of repetition and it takes some time to put together but if you knew that you wanted three of these for Christmas you just do it like an assembly line cut all the paper like you know do what we did where you're you're making your envelopes and you probably could spit three out in a couple of hours. Thanks, Shelly. Well, I'm glad you like it. And um, I will see you up next on October 21st is our next Come Color With Me. No, I lie. I'm back up on the 18th. Oh my gosh, I have some homework that I have to do. Um, I have Elizabeth Craft paper Christmas paper pack and I purchased her globe die and we're going to do some Christmas cards and matching envelopes using that die. Thanks Michelle. Thanks Carolyn. Well you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving and I wish you nothing but the best and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Have a terrific afternoon.